Welcome to Baking with Jay, episode two. Today, we are going to make maple syrup cookies. Melt one cup of unsalted butter in the microwave. So you all get to watch me melt some butter. How long does it take to melt butter? Start it on 30 seconds, and then you look at it again. did nothing. <laughs> we have our melted butter into the bowl. Spatula it out. Of My assistant says I need to spatula this out. So we're gonna spatula it out. Brown sugar. It's upside down. A cup and a half of packed brown sugar into the bowl. Huh. Ugh. Melted butter sprays when sugar gets put into it. Can I use this on the sugar? Oh, she's not micromanaging anymore. Next is a half cup of granulated sugar into the bowl. And then you stir your brown sugar, melted butter, and regular sugar all together. Quality content just starting. Next, you add your eggs. There's two of them, but you add them one at a time. Stirring in between. And then your second egg. And then you stir until it's well combined. Next, you need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And your hand shakes uncontrollably while you try to pour vanilla extract. Why Because I'm trying not to go over it, so it just like freaks out. And a quarter cup of maple syrup. I'm just using Aunt Jemima because I'm cheap and can't afford real maple syrup. This is our secret ingredient for this time around that the judges have to guess what it is. My assistant said spatula. Yeah? Yeah? Spatula. And then you gotta stir it all together to make sure it's properly mixed. Best mixer in the kitchen. Thanks, Mom. So now that you have all your wet ingredients mixed, you're gonna put that to the side. And you're going to get a separate bowl so you can mix your flours and baking soda, baking powder, the dry ingredients all together. You need three quarter cups of flour into your bowl. That went everywhere. Is it really only three quarters of a cup? Three quarter cups, all purpose flour. Are you checking because you don't believe me? Come, assistant, come. She doesn't believe me that I know how to read a recipe. You used to do this everywhere. Three and a quarter cups. That's exactly what I said, three and a quarter cups. You said three one quarter cups, which is three quarters of a cup. Three quarter cups, please get out of my cooking shop. Did you take the quarter cup and go three of those? No, I did three. Three of those and the quarter. I said three cups, it was in that big. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Everybody say goodbye to the assistant. Next. You need two teaspoons of cornstarch. One, two. And then you need one teaspoon of baking soda. Make sure that it's leveled. Take your knife. One teaspoon. One teaspoon of baking powder. Leveled. And then finally, one teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna do it over the sink because I have no control in my pouring abilities. You can just hear it <laughs> And then you're gonna mix it all together. Now, next step, you take your dry ingredients and slowly incorporate them into your wet ingredients, stirring in between. Fun fact, don't put it all in at one time or it's going to spray everywhere. That's why we say gradually put the dry ingredients in the wet ingredients. What have you done there? You did that one. What did I do? What did you do? What did you make that you learned that lesson? Get your mixer and mix it up. And then just to make sure you have everything incorporated, you spatula the sides to get all the excess flyaways into your bowl. Thank you, assistant. She's giving me the thumbs up. You listened last week. I'm a baker. See, this is what I learned for my genius hour. You always use the spatula. Or you listen to your assistant. Or you listen to your assistant. So the camera cut out, but what we just did was take our two cups of chocolate chip, 
pour it in to your mixed dry and wet ingredients and you have to stir until it's all incorporated. This is what it looks like. You gotta keep stirring until all the chocolate chips are evenly dispersed in your batter dough. Dough batter? Is it batter or is it dough? Yeah, cookie batter. I don't know. Whatever. Question of the day. Cookie dough or cookie batter? Now the worst part of this recipe is that you have to cover the, your bowl with a saran wrap, clear wrap, whatever you want to call it. Have it chill in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes. So that's what we're going to go do and then we'll tune back in after those 30 minutes. So ran wrap, we're wrapping, we're wrapping into the refrigerator we go. Into the refrigerator. We set our timer for 30 minutes. What do you do in that 30 minutes? We clean our station. Thank you, assistant. We had a wardrobe change because it was too hot in the kitchen. But now that we've chilled, for half an hour. We preset our oven to 350. And now you take your spoon, you scoop your dough, and you need to roll it into balls. It says that it needs to be taller than it is wide. I have no idea how much this dough expands. So we're gonna start off by only putting two beside each other. And then if it doesn't expand that much, we'll reevaluate. So we're gonna put it two by four on our cookie sheet so that hopefully they don't expand into each other. But we'll see how that works out. The recipe also says that, that once you are done putting the cookies on your cookie sheet that you want to wrap up your dough again and put it back into the fridge while the cookies bake. And then you're going to take your sheets of dough and you're going to put them into the oven for 13 minutes. And now we just wait until the oven beeps. Okay, so I thought it would be fun to do a finished project live taste testing for you all so you can see the judge, this one right here. Introduce yourself. I'm the assistant. She's the assistant. This is my mother, Marianne. They look really good. Like they're really round. That's good. Thank you. Okay, so aesthetically, that's, that's amazing. Thank you. Okay. She's ranking it five. I'm going to give it a... Yeah. Four. It's a lot better than but the potato chip cookie. Those looked gross in my opinion. They're, They're very good. crunchy. They got a good crunch to them though, which is interesting because there's cornstarch in there and the cornstarch is supposed to make them soft. They're average to me. Like if you're gonna mm. go crunchy, go real crunchy. Mm -mm. Rainbow chip. Chips no, Ahoy. Ugh, like eating sawdust. Okay, so she's wrong. I think this is my personal opinion. She says it's three average for consistency. I agree. See, I'm not big on the crunch though, but you like the crunch? I'm not big on the crunch. But it's not crunchy enough. It's soft in the middle. They're definitely better than the other one. Mm -hmm. Overall enjoyment, I'm gonna say a four. Yeah, I'll give it a four too, but um, you can't tell what the secret ingredient is. No. I know what it is, but you can't tell what it is. You'll know Taste, people get it. I say four. Actually mm. like three and a half. Mm. My score is 14.5, which is a lot higher than the potato chip cookies, which I gave 10.5. She's 15. Point five. Say goodbye. Thank you for joining us on uh, episode two. I need milk now. Baking with Jay. Goodbye.